Pet Cemetery stars Jason Clark not being complicit in the rape of the Terminator franchise, John Lithgow living on the border of the wilderness as a protector of the Sasquatch, Amy Simetz doing a whole hell of not a lot, and Jete Lawrence being the best thing in the whole damn movie. Pet Cemetery is a remake of the 1989 adaptation of Stephen King's novel of the same name in which the story has little to do with pets or cemeteries, but everything to do with dead kids destined to do horrible things in the name of some unseen spirit. So basically, the kids become white walkers and trample all over for Westeros. I suppose the big question everyone is going to want to ask is whether or not this is actually just a shot-for-shot -shot remake of the original. The answer is thankfully no, because that would be psycho. During the source material, there will be many similarities. For example, perhaps the biggest difference being that in this version, instead of Gage getting RKO'd out of nowhere by a semi-truck and looking like a clicker from The Last of Us French kissed a speeding frying pan, Ellie is the one who stands there like a deer in the headlights and tanks the hit instead. There are other differences, though minimal in some cases. The broader story follows the same beats and pacing is the original, in which the first two acts dredge on like that mother-in-law you can't wait to see croak. Then the world-shattering third act, in which the Creed family's life is turned upside down like it got in the ring with Ivan Drago. This prime difference does strike better in this version, as Ellie is played by an actress who can act decently well and doesn't look like a cereal box reading lines off of a teleprompter. Thus, we as the audience get to feel the pain of this little girl growing on you until that heart is torn from your chest and spat on like watching your favorite character die in a show. Included in this version are more nods to the book, such as mentioning the Wendigo spirit, for example. Instead of making Ellie into some pint-sized murderer right off the bat like Gage going full Chucky in the original, we get to watch Ellie start off more confused about what has happened before full throttling into Hell Have No Fury like a resurrected vengeful woman on her first period. The kinds of things that would make Carrie proud. There is the odd notion to include certain imagery, like the children wearing masks. We get it, movie. The kids are meant to be scary, and you're running out of ideas to stand out from the original, like someone who shows up to a business meeting at Apple while dressed up like Sailor Moon. But you don't have to try so hard. Just be yourself and let the ambiance and emotion build the tension. There's no need to remind us right away that there will be scares. And man, the scares in this movie are ruined by standard Hollywood practice so hard. It's bad enough that the movie more or less gave away the ending like a drunk friend spoiling the Red Wedding on social media with a literal opening shot of the film. But every scare in this film, no matter what it is, is accompanied by a loud noise. It's like living with a prankster, at first walking into plastic wrap is funny, but after falling on a buttered tile floor for the 50th time, that prankster won't be laughing anymore when you've had enough and you just drop kick them in the throat. Passing truck comes by, jump scare! Dead body already sitting up, jump scare! Someone in the theater farts really loudly, jump scare! Why the hell not? The only thing absent from the ending was Bagul. This is something the original managed to pull off better, because not all of the jump scares were accompanied by a loud startling noise and the entire brass section of the London Symphony Orchestra blaring in E-flat. Pet Cemetery is different than the original by enough key notes that it is worth a watch. The acting is good, with Jete Lawrence taking the spotlight, in my opinion, having to give the heart of the film to the audience before it is snatched away like the Kalima ritual. The effects, though few, blend with the practical quite well, with the exception of the PS3 graphics that ran over Ellie. And if the opening shot didn't exist, I feel that the ending would have been a lot more impactful. If you're a big fan of Stephen King, this is one to watch. Otherwise, you might want to turn it on if there's nothing else to watch on TV, or your TiVo is full of all the cooking shows your mom watches.